screen and uh, we're going to pause here to give you a chance to call in and then we're going to go in further and talk to Dom, Dr. Tamio about uh, what uh, could, you could be having these symptoms and, and you could go into the hospital and uh, they can find that nothing's wrong with you. We're going to ask Dr. Tamio about that and how do you, how do you deal with that and, and what, how should you uh, be able to communicate with your physician if you have these uh, kinds of symptoms. Um, the telephone number's on the screen. Uh, we look forward with your calls, and, and I know there's, there's really some things here that you would like answered, and we don't want to wait until the program is almost off, and then we get a whole bunch of calls. Uh, we want you to call right now. Okay, Dr. Tamio, uh, the person who is going uh, may go into the, the doctor's office, and they can complain, you know, about not only just one of these, but they complain about many of them. I got mm -hmm. the pain. You know, I got the depression, I got the fatigue, uh, and, uh, and the doctor could say, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong. Is that possible? Yeah, it's, it's possible. It also depends on your training and your, your background, your knowledge, and your acceptance of this particular syndrome that it does exist. Uh, if a patient comes in with, with these complaints, again, and I emphasize in every show the importance of a history and physical, very important, and what I do is to take a good history, and we go through a physical and I do my routine blood work and if a patient comes in with these particular complaints what I usually do is I draw a baseline titers I would do an Epstein-Barr virus titer I do a cyclomeglia virus titer I'd also do a Lyme titer and I would also do which is standard for me I do a thyroid profile to see if there's any changes there because I want to make sure that there's no metabolic disorders as well as my routine CBC which is a complete blood count and SMA, SMA7, uh, which would be electrolytes to make sure every, everything is within normal or in balance. So very important there. Once, for, once I find uh, and I get the results back and I go through and I do a, a physical exam where I do, um, I do, I check the muscle skeletal and we look at the, the trigger points and then I look at the tendon points to see if there's a difference and then we take it from there. Okay, we have a caller. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. We'll take your call. Okay, uh, Dr. Tamio, while we're waiting for that call to go through, and as soon as it's through, you can go right ahead and ask your question. Um, uh, many of these uh, that we mentioned are almost flu-like, you know, and is it possible that a person can be, uh, be getting treatment for flu when it's, when it's uh, um, chronic fatigue syndrome? Yes, uh, again, that's a good point that you mentioned flu-like. Uh, the two titers that I mentioned, the Epstein-Barr virus, again, you hear it, virus or cyclomeglia virus, that would be similar, the side effects or some, what we call signs symptoms could be to the flu. So again, what I like to do is I do uh, a baseline titer and I see what their, their levels are from there. I make a decision. I, again, I sit down with the patient and we come up and make a decision on how we're going to treat this. Okay, you're on the line. Go right ahead. Okay, we're still having some technical problems, Dr. Tamio. Um, uh, then you're suggesting then that if a person goes into their physician with symptoms like that, they should ask for a full examination, am I right? That's correct. Uh, instead of being treated immediately uh, for a flu or, 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 you know, the normal t shot or, 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 or to take, you know, some penicillin or something like that. Um, what should they ask the, the doctor to do? Well, again, when you go, like, like I always said, you must have a good relationship with your physician. You must feel comfortable with them. You must be able to sit down and have a conversation, an educational conversation, and be able to uh, discuss your symptoms and feel comfortable with it. Once you do that, you really should have a complete history and physical. Again, that would be the conversation aspect. And the physical itself, you want the physician to really do a thorough workup and educate you on what, what he, is, he or she, your physician, is doing during the process. From there, you want to do a complete workup regarding labs and include all those labs that I mentioned, the Epstein-Barr virus, a Lyme titer, a, uh, a cyclomeglia virus titer, uh, very important as well as uh, your routine lab work. Right, we're gonna come back with some, you know, with some practical situation on this. Uh, but folks, we're having some technical problems. Don't be discouraged. We're gonna have the phones cleared up 
in a few minutes and some some bugs in there but uh we want you to continue to call your your questions are very important not only to us but to many of those who are listening and so we're going to ask you just to, to just bear with us as we try to clear up the phone line so that you'll be able to ask your questions okay um uh the uh, uh chronic fatigue syndrome uh, it, does it does it have what they call periods of times where it'll come on and then disappear and then come back again? Uh, is, it, is that is that uh, uh, symptomatic? I believe it is. I, I right. believe you know you can have uh, periods of time where you're feeling good about yourself and everything's going fine, and mm -hmm. then you can have uh, recurrent episodes where you just feel lousy, you mm -hmm. know, and then you go to the doctor and and you come in like you like. An example was you went into the physician and your test came back negative, normal, everything normal, but you still feel lousy. Right. Uh, this is something that you know you really need to do a thorough workup, and you also need to again listen to the history of what the patient is telling you. Just because of the labs, everything comes back negative, normal. Uh, again, there is a psychological, a mental health component that's involved. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know. You must ask about the living arrangements because someone would have what we call cabin fever. Uh, where they stay indoors all the day, right, all yeah. the time, and you lead to depression. Mm -hmm. So what I suggest to my uh, patients... Okay, we got a caller. Call go right okay. ahead. You're on the line. Hello? Yes, go right ahead. Yes. I have a question for the doctor. Um, I had a, a little lump at my, at, at, between my ear and my throat here, and sometimes I have a pain down in my shoulder. Okay, the question was that she had a lump between her shoulder, within her neck between her shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, again, something like that that's just too broad to mm -hmm. define. Um, the only suggestion is I would offer you to go into your physician and get a thorough workup to find out what that is because that could be any number of things. Something very benign to something malignant, uh, meaning something very simple to something very complex. So you need to go in and, and have a thorough workup just to make sure and be on the I, safe side. I told him, and he said that is just, um, if it gets any bigger, he will see, because it's there for two years. But now it's pain, in, it have a little pain there. Okay. Uh, so, you, so you've been, you saw your physician and... I saw my physician, and I told him about it, and he, he examined it, and he told me that it, it's there for two years, but now, for the past week and a half, it's continued pain in me. Okay. okay. Right. All right. So we've been the, the physician's been watching this for two years, but now it seems the symptoms are progressing. What I suggest is you go back if you're not happy with the results. Change the doctor. Yes, I go for a second opinion. Um, well, I'll see Doctor Tom. Yeah, well, you can come in and see me, and I'll I'll, I'll take a look at it, and we'll see what we have to do. So where is your office? Is okay. We, right at the end of the program, we're going to have the telephone numbers on the screen, and we want you to take the numbers down. By the way, all the all of those. Uh, callers who are calling in and you need to talk to Dr. Tamio. The telephone number is on the screen. You can call him. Uh, Dr. Tamio will be here even after the broadcast and you want to still call in and ask a question, you can do that. Now, we don't need your name, uh, whatever, so call in. Thank you very much. Uh, we watch the end of the program, ma'am, and we'll have that all for you. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Thank God. you for calling in. Thank yeah. you for calling in. And we want to say to those who are out there, I know you've been trying to call in. Start calling now because the lines are now working. So if you hesitated before and you couldn't get through, or you called and couldn't get through, then uh, uh, we're gonna, we want you to call in. We want to hear from you. Just like the lady, I know there are many others out there that we can help. So we look for your call. Uh, Dr. Tamio, uh, um, the, uh, back to my question about um, uh, the the chronic situation mm -hmm. and the fact that it, it could happen and dissipate and then maybe um, come return. back, return. Right, right, right. right. Um, well, mm -hmm. let me just finish up. Like I was saying, yeah. uh, we talking about <laughs> uh, what you'd call like a cabin fever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's someone who stays indoors, you know, all the time. And that right. could lead to like a depression-like syndrome. I suggest to all my patients that come in where they have chronic pain, I suggest from the garden get some